This program is brought to you by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii, a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing with the community the many benefits of a vegetarian diet. Free monthly meetings include vegetarian experts found locally and on the mainland, quick and easy cooking demonstrations, and healthful and delicious food samples. Members enjoy an informative quarterly newsletter, social activities, and discounts at many vegetarian-friendly restaurants and health food stores. For an application, call 944-8344. That's 944-8344. Or visit our website at www.vsh.org. vsh.org. Aloha, good evening. Okay, well, welcome to the uh, monthly public lecture for the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii. How many of you are attending one of our lectures for the first time tonight? Okay, good, quite a few of you. Well, uh, I'd like to give you a warm aloha for you newcomers and aloha as well. I see a lot of familiar faces out there, so for both those of you who are attending for the first time and those of you who are coming back, welcome. The Vegetarian Society of Hawaii is a nonprofit volunteer organization that was founded in 1990 to promote human health, animal rights, and protection of the environment by means of vegetarian education. It is one of the largest local vegetarian societies in the United States. We now have over 2,000 members. We will have food samples tonight. Rather than our regular refreshments, we are going to, uh, you'll get to sample the food that's prepared tonight because we have a uh, raw foods preparation demonstration. Tonight's lecture will be videotaped and broadcast on the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii weekly TV series, Vegetarian. Um, on Oahu, the program airs on Thursdays at 6 p.m. on Olelo Channel 52. You might want to tape each show and keep the ones you like and tape over the others. It's now time for me to introduce our special guest tonight. Sylvia Thompson is chef owner of Licious Dishes. It's a raw vegan production, raw vegan food production company. The kitchen is currently under construction at Dole Cannery on the ground floor on the Costco side. You can help yourself to Licious Dishes brochures. If you're interested, it looks like that, and it's available on the literature table in back. And our other guest tonight is Rebecca Widlin. Uh, she is the author of The Blonde Vegetarian, A Practical and Comprehensive Guide to Delicious Healthy Cooking. Her passion is teaching cooking and equipping people to take care of their own health. She's a wellness cuisine instructor at Castle Wellness Center and looks forward to helping Sylvia launch Licious Dishes. They are both graduates from Living Light Culinary Arts Institute of California and certified raw vegan chef instructors. Please give a warm aloha to our guests tonight, Rebecca Woodland and Sylvia Thompson. Thanks for coming tonight. That's in the waiting room. Hello. <laughs> Becky and I are going to show you how to make broccoli pesto stuffed mushrooms. We're going to start with that, and um, then we'll go on to the the tatsui salad with uh, red onions, mint, and olives. And then we'll finally uh, finish off with the uh, lemony zucchini zucchini bisque and with fennel shavings. Throughout the evening, we're also provide little tidbits of health, healthful information about the foods that we are preparing. We consider ourselves students of health, so I hope you don't take it like we're trying to give you medical advice. Every now and then, Becky and I will be chirping in while, as, we, as we go along, giving little health, helpful hints about the food. Okay, our first, this first recipe, the broccoli pesto stuffed mushrooms, actually came from this book by Renee Lou Undercoffler. 
This was one of the, um, was the first book that I used to start practicing my raw food endeavors. And she bought a whole bunch of them and passed them out to all of her friends. So we <laughs> all practice together. Yeah. <laughs> great. She has this recipe called pesto stuffed mushrooms, but I didn't have enough basil. So what I did was I had broccoli and I just chanced it. And she says in chapter 19 that broccoli is part of the brassica genus which has very um, thick cellulose um, skin over the um, broccoli. So it's good to lightly steam it so that the cellulose can, it, it would soften up for your, to ease the digestion. And so your body doesn't have to work so hard to recognize it and, and get the nutrition. But we don't actually cook it, okay? It's just like a hot water bath. Yeah, what we do is we bring the wa um, water to a boil. Then we, after, when the bubbles are just barely, you know, the size of fine champ the, the same as what you find in fine champagne, and you can stick your finger in there for a long time. You turn the stove off, and you dunk, dunk those broccoli in for about five to seven minutes until you, the fork can go through pretty well, not too soft. And at that point, you drain it out, and you dump the broccoli. We add the walnuts. Walnuts are high in omega-3 omega fatty acids. Protein. Yeah. Protein. And then the pine nuts, a quarter cup. And our extra virgin olive oil so that it melts the ingredients and our white miso which is uh, one tablespoon of this white miso this is unpasteurized so you still get it it's, it's actually um, a living food and I use it a lot to make cheeses nut cheeses instead of using um, fermented rejuvelac and Finally, some sea salt. <coughs> and then cook it a bit. Until most of the, the walnuts are pretty much the same size as the broccoli and off, and then let it run a little, but not too much. You want to have some texture, and that's about it. For the pesto, now Becky's going to show you what we do for the mushrooms. Okay. We're using the cremini mushrooms here. They're a little more substantial, and they have a slightly nuttier flavor than the regular button mushrooms. And they are a useful source of certain B vitamins, B1 and 2 specifically. And they're a wonderful vehicle for this great stuffing. 
Um, I just want to say a couple things about broccoli. Um, in my research, I've learned that broccoli has a lot of um, cancer-fighting properties. The sulfur compounds in broccoli actually inhib inhibit the growth of existing tumors and shrink the, the existing tumors and um, are said to prevent any uh, new tumors. So as a cancer survivor, that's really good news to me. I wish I would have been eating broccoli all my life. Um, it's specifically uh, valuable in you know, broccoli that hasn't been cooked to death. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. So here with the cremini mushrooms, I'm just showing you a couple of samples here. Instead of washing the mushrooms, I just wipe them off. And the reason we don't wash them, we don't want them to get soggy. Because when they're soggy, they just, well, they're yucky. What can I say? And also, they, they won't absorb the um, marinade either. So I just take a towel and kind of brush off the dust or whatever's there. We don't even want to think about that. <laughs> um, snap off the ends. You can save the ends and include them in uh, you know, another dish, just about anything you want. Okay. got those. I'm, I'm putting together another marinade here. Looks like that. I have here four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Thank you. We just love baggies. Yeah, these are the best. You know, you don't have to you wash have them. Light the best. And also, if you are limited in your refrigerator space, oh, yeah. you can just pile jillions of baggies on top of each other. Just make sure that you have a good seal. Okay. Now here, I'm adding wheat-free tamari. And we like to use the wheat-free tamari because a lot of people are intolerant to wheat, and they don't even know it. Some people have celiac disease, and um, it's often misdiagnosed as a lot of, you know, other things. And it's, it's just, if we can avoid using um, wheat products, we like to do that. So here we use the wheat-free tamari, which, by the way, is, in my opinion, way better than regular shoyu. I mean, way better. Not just better tasting, but just better for you and better tasting. Okay. Hmm? The, Osawa the Osawa brand is, is our favorite. It's unpasteurized, yeah. So it, it's truly raw. Okay, so I've got this. Just kind of mush it around here. And I am going to slice. Oh, no, I don't need to slice this for this recipe. I sometimes get a little mixed up. Just dump these in there. And you can marinate these for a while. You don't want to do it for days and days because then they'll get mushy. You just want it, these are a little more substantial than, than some other mushrooms, so it takes a little bit longer to marinate. And then we stuff them. We're going to take these that have been marinating and, marinating and stuff a few. Okay. It's, you'll notice we like to wear gloves. It's really messy business here. Okay, just put a little bit of this in here. Press it down a little bit. On here. And then we're going to put it on the dehydrator tray. We've been, if you're wondering what that wonderful fragrance is, it's these mushrooms dehydrated. Okay. So, here we go. We really enjoy using a dehydrator. Um, we both you know, are the proud owners of stoves and ovens, but they're used mostly to store things in now. And we use our dehydrators for everything. Um, it, we keep the temperature below at 115 or lower so that it doesn't kill the enzymes. We want to preserve as much of the enzyme action as possible. It helps with the digestion and everything else as far as I'm concerned. I feel a lot better eating raw. And this uh, dehydration allows oh that's ringing the dehydration allows 
the flavors to meld and marry, and it also makes the room smell really good and whets your appetite. We like to use the Excalibur because of its square design. You can there's more airflow from all directions. You don't have to keep like changing the trays or worrying about part of it getting too dry and part of it not getting warm enough. Um, the airflow is wonderful. Some of the dehydrators are nine trays and some are five trays. I recommend you get the biggest one you, you can use because even if you don't think you're going to need it, uh, you'll find it has a, a whole lot of wonderful uses. So we really enjoy using it for all kinds of things. Actually, I started off with a five tray. I thought, well, I mean, it's just the two of us. Uh, I had a five tray and um, I would set my, my um, dehydrator at 105 degrees to make these flat seed crackers. And then when I finally upgraded to the nine tray, I, f I realized that I had to turn it up to 115 in order for it to, um, uh, to cook it at the same rate as it was when it was 105. It had so much product in there with the five tray. With the, and in the nine tray. Yeah. yeah. It lowered the heat when there's a lot of product. Okay, next we're going to get to do the taxway salad. to spinach in a way, but then they, they have these stems that are so juicy, and it, it doesn't get real slimy, you know, after you put the, um, like spinach, when you put the, the, the oils and the, the salad dressing on. So what we did was we um, rinsed it out before, and we got this spinning bag, I don't know if you've ever seen this, this is so cool, when you go on trips, you can go like that. And then all the water collects down in this side, in the reservoir, like that. But we already dried it off, so I just wanted to show you. I actually retired my round bowl type salad spinner because I found that this worked better. It was a lot more fun to use, and it didn't bash the produce because sometimes the certain designs of the salad, you know, the regular salad spinners in a bowl, are really hard on fragile. Greens and uh, I just love this. And, and you can buy them, you know, four to a bag. I don't know where you can buy them here. We got them at culinary school, and we can reuse them hundreds of times. And they're they're amazing. And you know, they take up as much space as a plastic bag. <laughs> Great. You can even store the stuff in there if you want to. Okay. And next, I'm putting in garlic, and then I'm mixing the salt with the garlic. When you're preparing raw. Um, raw recipes, you have to be conscious about how much uh, flavoring you add because, you know, since you're not cooking, you're, you're keeping the vibrant flavors of the, the um, ingredients. And actually, I did get this, the tax recipe from a KCC demo done at the, the farmer's market. I think Kaiser was doing it. Oh, yeah, 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 Kaiser. And um, they had put feta cheese, and twice as much oil as I'm put, going to be putting in tonight. Mm -hmm. And they wanted, um, it required you to like um, saute the, the onions. So when I started turning raw, I, I looked at my favorite recipes and I decided to try this one. And it turned out pretty good. 
Okay, so that's the garlic and the salt all mixed together. Okay, this here is lime juice. Uh, what they required in their recipe was sherry vinegar. But because sherry vinegar is refined and I'm um, allergic to refined foods because of eczema, mm -hmm. I had to find some. I put the lime juice and the apple cider vinegar. So I had to find a replacement for uh, the sherry vinegar. So I had, at first I thought it was going to be orange juice and lime juice. And then I figured, okay, you better put lemon juice too. So I tried all different combinations and then I tried the, the sherry vinegar and I no. So it, it was too, you know, very piercing. So then I figured, okay, apple cider vinegar. And then I tried the apple cider vinegar with all the, lime, the, the, the different juices and came up with the lime juice. Yeah. The fun of raw cuisine is that it's, even though it's ancient, because that was how our ancestors ate originally, it's really very new and cutting edge. So it's all experimental. And it is really exciting. And it's, it's amazing what we learn every day. I feel so happy when I find, you know, I find something to take the place of like sherry vinegar, yeah. you know, because now I can eat it. <laughs> sherry vinegar costs a lot. Yeah, that's true. So then I get it and I just shake it up. And then here we have, um, I have the olives here. And what I do is like a lot of times I um, take food out to different concerts or, you know, buffets and that sort of stuff. And so what I do is I just kind of mash the, um, the olives because I don't want to bring a, a knife around. I just kind of like put it in a small baggie and put my fingernail through it or, you know, to chop it up. And you can find, every now and then, you can find a seed anyway. There's one right there. Yet another reason to keep a lot of Ziploc bags on here. This is an onion. Um, most of us spent a lot of time chopping onions, and it wasn't until we went to culinary school that we really figured out the best way, the right way to chop an onion. So that's what we're going to do here. What I'm doing here is... Um, Putting a flexible cutting mat on top of a little cushion thing, it's good for stability and it also kind of cushions the shock if you're doing a lot of chopping. And especially if you have carpal tunnel or something like that, it just makes a lot of sense. I'm using a big knife because I like it. Okay. And I, we're using the red onions, which are really sort of purple, um, because it's really beautiful. And you don't cry as much, too. As with um, a lot most more of them. Also. Yes, That's yes. What Dr. Gregor said. Yes. Um, onions have some amazing qualities. And they're anti cancer as well. Okay, I started by cutting it in half, end to end. I peeled it. And now I'm going to show you how to use. A mandolin, not an ordinary mandolin and not a music, musical instrument, just this thing. Ever, ever seen this? You know what it is? It's different from a regular mandolin because it's handheld. And the ceramic edge, this is cool, ten it stays sharp ten times longer than any other kind of edge. And it you know how a lot of times when you use a regular knife or a regular metal, whatever, it, the herbs or whatever you're slicing kind of turns brown? It, it, it damages it somehow. Well, this doesn't do that. And my favorite thing, besides it's really easy to clean, is it slices in both directions. So you can do it twice as fast. I don't know if you'll be able to really see this, but I'm holding this from the root end because otherwise, if you start here, it's going to fall all apart. The root end... It, it keeps it all together, okay? I'm wearing gloves for several reasons. One is, you know, it's more sanitary and it's not as gushy. And another reason is because I don't want to cut myself and believe it or not, a little bit of plastic makes a big difference. Okay, so, back and forth. And when I was um, using my mandolin, that said, what, twice, or four times as much for a uh, kind of racer, <laughs> it's just butchered the, you know, that the first time it was like that, the outside of skin was like cracking and like 
And then I couldn't go all the way down because I was scared I was going to, like, shave my hair. And but this is, see? It's like all the way down. And it's paper thin. Just paper thin. And she's not using the hat. So what brand is it? It's, it's Kyocera. It's the only one that makes it like this. There's a two-year warranty. Five-year. Five-year Five year warranty. Year. Oh, wow. Kyocera. Kyocera. K-Y-O-C-E-R. And um, I bought these at Williams-Sonoma. Okay, so this, I really recommend it. That, that is my very favorite kitchen tool today, anyway. Okay, can you hand me the ceramic knife there, please? Thank you. I have here some mint. Now, we're very fortunate that um, we have some great local farmers who can provide us with the tatsoi and mint and things like that, and it's, it's just really a delight. Um, what we did, or what I did here, is I just, you know, after washing the mint and spinning it dry, took it off of the, the stem and just stacked it. I'm here using a ceramic knife. Again, ten times, stays sharp ten times longer than any other kind of knife. I just stacked it. This is great. You know how sometimes when you have to cut tomatoes, especially if they're really ripe, and no matter what you do, they get kind of mangled. Even if you use a little tomato kind of knife, it doesn't seem to work. This works, no matter how ripe the tomato is, no matter what kind of herbs it is, and it doesn't make things um, smushed, you know what I mean, or rusty looking. Actually, a lot of these things that we, um, these gadgets and tools that we brought back from Living, were from Living Light, our, our culinary school in um, Fort Bragg, next to Mendocino. And I have um, actually um, a product order form in the back. So you could just access their um, website and then either fax your form over. And just say either Becky or I. Yeah, <laughs> or if you mention our names, it's a good thing. <laughs> Because uh, they actually give us um, living light dollars so we can take further classes. Yeah, it's just so we can, we, so we can take more. Um, like it's not money, it's just credits to get um, so we like can further our education. So much fun. It's great. Okay, so, so Sylvia. Yeah. We're back and then adding the pasta, olive. olive. And here you use a combination of the, the Greek calamata and, and the, the black. regular black California olive. Did you already put mint? Yes, I did. Oh, well. You can never have too much mint in your life, right? Oh. Mint is known to stimulate the digestion, and um, it's a good thing. Some people in certain cultures they use it. What would you like? The hand. Oh, the hand. Right. Yeah. Another thing that we got brought back from Living Light. Let me ask you the name of the ingredient. Tatsoi. Tatsoi. T A T S O I. And it's grown locally in Limanala. We went. We, we checked out um, Dean Okimoto's Nala Farms yesterday. It was so beautiful as we were driving in Waimanala. But we don't buy our produce at stores mostly. We get it at the farmer's market or from the farmers if we can. Um, it, you know, we tried to get some of this at Down to Earth, but um, we, you know, we got what we could from there, and then we just went to the farm. No, the farmer's market. At, not the open market, the farmer's market. At, uh, oh, it's at Kapilani Community College on Saturday mornings, early Saturday mornings at the base of Diamond Head in the parking lot. So and this is place. her taxi salad. Um, I, the reason why we're making the taxi salad is we want to popularize it so that more stores carry it. Because every time I ask, they say, oh, is there something that you would like us to carry or we don't have? That, um, and so I said, how about taxi? And then they, you know... Not sure they say, that you're the only one that wants that. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> Don't they know how great it is? What are they? These are um, made of koa, and um, it's 
just a more classy way of like, you know, mixing your salad. It's easier than using those, and you know. Yeah, it's better than the tongs because it's more spread open, and it's like using your own hands, but you know, it looks more classy. Here we have, we have the dressing mixed in with the onions and garlic. The beauty of using the mandolin for the onions is that the thinner they are, the more marinade they absorb. And the original recipe before Sylvia's revision, like she said, it called for cooking, basically, yeah, sauteing the onion. And um, you don't need to do that. All the flavor and the nutrients and everything are right there. You just slice, slice them thin enough and marinate them with the dressing. That's what we do for raw cooking. We marinate. The pink? The pink? It's that's the red onion. The red onion. It, it, it takes on the pink. And because she sliced it so thin, it just, just about melts in, in that brine. So you don't have to cook it. She held the root. I she held the root. The root holds everything together. And she didn't have to like go really hard. And you she just you barely touch it. You don't have to put any pressure. Not like Neo. It's like really going at it on my mandolin. So it's like your fingers by never getting close. The roots no, I got I got close, but okay. I didn't put any pressure on. I, I and I was holding it. Yeah. By see, the root. this is how much was left. And she used her hand. You know, if you use a mandolin, you can't. Use your hand, you know, all the way to the end. So that's really great. Now we're going to do some soup. Have you ever wanted to make soup, but you didn't want to slave forever over a hot stove? And you didn't want to open a can of something or a package of something? Well, that's why we have blenders. Now, not just any blender. Although, you know, it would work with any blender, but it wouldn't be nearly as fast or as smooth. I have here the Champ HP3. It's a K-Tech. It's by the K-Tech company. It's another name is Blendtec. And this is the kind of thing they use at Jamba Juice. Now, I'm not here to promote Jamba Juice, but, you know, they make an awful lot of juice and smoothies and stuff like that. And if it's good enough for them, it's it's really good. I use Sona Vitamix and I give it away. <laughs> this is, I really enjoy this. It's also blonde proof. It turns itself off. Okay, and for somebody like me, that's really important. <laughs> it's true. Okay, so. We're going to start with zucchini. This is called a lemony zucchini dish. Now, in culinary school, we were told that if you give something a French or a foreign sounding name, you can charge more. Okay, but you're getting this for free. Okay? So, starting off with the zucchini. Peel, chop zucchini. You don't need to chop it much. Okay. Now, I like to use a medium sized zucchini. If you get much bigger than this, what happens is it's full of seeds and it's kind of bitter. If you get them too much too smaller, you just need to have a whole bunch more. I'm going to start by peeling this. Again, I'm using a ceramic blade. They don't rust and you can put them in the dishwasher. I once made this um, in a hurry and I forgot to peel it and it was a lovely green color. However, it turned bitter almost immediately because the peel is bitter. That's why we peel. Okay, zucchini, it turns out, is a wonderful source of vitamin C. 
if it's eaten raw. Once you cook it, what's the point? It's really not, um, you know, it has very little going for it once you cook it. Grab my trusty knife here. Okay. I'm going to just cut this a little bit. What I found is for this recipe, two of these, this size of uh, zucchini makes about the right amount, five cups. Okay. Just do a, a coarse chop or whatever. It doesn't really matter in this type of a blender. Okay. Can add the water. I use purified water here. I found that if if you don't want to add much water to it, it comes out a lot thicker, but then it's not really a bisque. Pretend it's hollandaise sauce that's almost legal, okay? It's great. I've used it over um, asparagus, raw asparagus, things like that. It's wonderful. Now I'm adding the extra virgin olive oil. Don't, this is a very rich soup. It's definitely not for people who are... Um, seriously watching their fat grams um, and you don't want to eat a lot of it. I mean, you might want to, but um, a little goes a long way. It, it's really, a, it's just kind of a treat. Now I'm adding some seasonings here. Garlic. Now garlic has antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial, anti-cancer, anti-heart disease, anti, you know, all the bad stuff. Quality. So, and no, not if we all eat it, right? Same time. Okay. And what we like to do because we use so much garlic and it's kind of humbug always, you know, peeling it and stuff. So we bought a whole bunch, like from Costco or something, put it in a like a food processor or you know something where we can mush it up, stick in the freezer, and then when we need it, we found that like two heaping measuring teaspoons full is about the same as one good size clove of garlic. So, you know, give or take. Oh, a half teaspoon? Oh, the reason, yeah, that's true. Yeah, half teaspoon. A, a, a heaping half teaspoon is one clove. The reason I got mixed up is because we were multiplying this recipe by who knows how much. <laughs> and I came up with that. Okay, now I've got lemon juice here, fresh squeezed. And lemons are all different sizes. Um, what I found on the average, a regular lemon, you know, just a regular store lemon, usually has about a quarter of a cup of juice. But a Meyer lemon has twice as much juice. And it's a little bit sweeter. It's wonderful. Okay. Meyer lemons. They're the ones that look kind of like oranges on the outside. They're round, more round, and they're very juicy. Okay, now I'm adding a tablespoon of onion powder. Instead of regular fresh onions, the onion powder gives it more of a deep, uh, it's just, just a, a, it's a softer, more depth kind of a flavor. And here is agave nectar. What on earth is agave nectar? Well, it's a sweetener that's all natural. It comes from a cactus. It's raw. It doesn't taste weird. It doesn't have like a bitter aftertaste or a chemical taste or a taste you have to get used to. It is vegan, unlike honey. And it's very low on the glycemic index, so it's safe for diabetes. And you don't have to acquire a taste for it. Believe me, it's wonderful. Here is salt. Now, believe it or not, the kind of salt you use in this recipe makes all the difference in the world. Okay, this is actually a tablespoon of salt. Okay. I'm using real salt, and I always thought it was kind of hokey to have a salt named real salt because isn't all salt real? Well, this is more real than others. It's got all kinds of wonderful trace minerals. 
And um, I love the flavor. And the best part is, since we live in Hawaii, you know how salt tends to cake once you've opened it? This one's because it's in a vacuum pack thing with a little screw top thing. You can keep it airtight. It's wonderful. So it lasts. Also, the table salt often has um, other anti-caking additions, yeah, so like sugar sometimes and chemical. other chemicals. Mm. So don't use regular table salt. Try to use, uh, upgrade yourself. Use the real salt, which is the pink salt from the deep um, river bed. And so it has a yeah, This is from, in the ocean. this used to be, um, this is, was mined in Utah. I have cumin here. A little goes a long way. Uh, cumin is a wonderful addition to many dishes, but in our opinion, if you can taste the cumin, then you put too much in. Because you don't want it to enhance the flavor instead of overpowering it. Okay. I'm going to show you a little trick about lemons. You don't need a fancy juicer, and you don't need a... Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. You just need a real fork, not a plastic one, okay? And what I'm going to do now is fork a lemon, okay? So, I cut it along the equator, so it looks like that. If there's any seeds that are really obvious, I kind of pick them out as much as I can. Okay, then I'm going to just stab it, kind of uh, get the membrane loosened up here. Put the fork in, twist the fork one way, and twist the lemon the other way. You get a lot of juice this way. Okay. And like I said, you don't need to, you know, have any fancy stuff. a great tip, especially when you travel. Since I'm going to Maui, I'm going to have, I'm going to try to carry as little as I can. So I'm probably going to, I'll show people about sitting bag and things and stuff. That's great. You can pack yourself your, your own kit for wherever you go. Okay, so I'm just adding this there. And now... Are you ready? This sounds like, you know, a jet engine about to take off. <laughs> uh, we'll see. This is a K-Tech blender. It's um, also known as the HP 3 Champ. And um, I told Becky, well, Becky turned me on to this thing. And then when I went to culinary school, they had all this Vitamix. And I volunteered to make this um, cheese. The, for the a feta cheese out of almonds. And I swear, I, I must have burned them about two of them out. I had four of the other Vitamixes all lined up, and it's like, cause you can't put too much water, you're not supposed to put too much water, but you can't get a vortex going because it's so now at the bottom. And I was like, wish I had my queso. So she bought one <laughs> <laughs> for culinary school. Yeah, you can yeah. get it online or, you know, through... Um, the living light culinary see. Now the beauty of this too is you don't lose the product in there because it doesn't have funny ridges for things to get stuck in and so when when it's done, you know, it just pours out beautifully and if you need to use a spatula, you get it all out. Okay, are you ready for this? Well, I've got to turn it on. <laughs> It's done. Okay. And you'll get to enjoy it in a few minutes. Like I mentioned before, if you use less water or omit the water, you can use this as a, you know, a sauce. Like, you know, pour it over your broccoli or asparagus or whatever. Um, I've learned something really cool about zucchinis. You know, like I said, this is a whole experimental thing. I learned that because zucchinis have a thickening quality, you can use them to make salad dressing. 
when with you can either omit the oil or decrease the oil substantially and you don't need to add a bunch of other thickeners because the zucchini will be the thickener and amazingly it doesn't make everything taste like zucchini I have a great vegan Caesar salad dressing recipe that is you know based on zucchini and nobody would ever know it if I didn't tell them anyway here it is and you'll get a chance to um, enjoy it in a few minutes oh yeah I forgot this is, I got so carried away with the, um, the soup part of it we've got fennel shaving now what on earth is fennel it looks kind of like when you see the, the, the full plant it looks like a cross between celery and dill it's got the feathery ends and the celery type stalks and this is half of a fennel bulb cut it in half and our trusty mandolin right here just want to show you this works great for this too we put um, fennel shavings in the soup now if you're serving this at a party or something you can put the soup in a punch bowl and then float the fennel on top it's kind of decorative or if you just want to make sure everybody gets a little something you can just put it in after you've blended the soup and uh, this is what it looks like it has a slight anise flavor kind of a licorice type flavor and um, I did this with this mandolin as well so it's got a root here and I'm, I'm just going to show you so this is how it works thank you for reminding me yeah. about the fennel it's a really nice touch too because it um, it's a little bit crunchy so it gives it a little surprise texture and because of the flavor it's like a woo it's great this is a really great pungent dish <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you know, usually I couldn't take um, fennel but now I really like it mm -hmm. it's yeah it's, it's a great combination and um, fennel is supposed to be very calming on the stomach too so that's a good thing it has a lot of beta carotene and folate and all those other good things so there's a lot of good reasons to enjoy this soup also zucchini has a lot of vitamin C oh yeah it's loaded if you eat it raw it's loaded with vitamin C it's great okay so thank you demo. do you have any questions onion powder um, the onion powder, I, I made it with, um, I got it from Costco, one of those big things, because I, I always make this dish. And um, I put it in the magic bullet. Have you ever heard of the magic bullet? Um, it's kind of like a, a coffee grinder, also it has its own blade that you can... It's like a off. mini blender, only more powerful. Yeah, and it looks like a bullet. And they have different sizes, a small bullet and a big bullet. And two different, and it comes with two different blades, one a flat blade and one... Um, it's kind of a sticky out blade and it's really good it's really great for bread production I just stuff as much of the um, it's, I, a black pepper that's how I grind it up I put it in and it grinds it up real fast and um, you know you can't find onion powder it's so hard so I just get the regular shaved type of um, onions the dried onion and I stick it in the magic bullet and press those I have powder. seen it in the herb section or the spice section and down to earth in the bulk section. Oh yeah. 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 I was over there and sometimes I it's not there and sometimes. Actually I want to thank Down to Earth for you know giving us so much to help us um, fight this. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. This lady was asking me uh, because of my eczema um, how long I was doing vegan. Was that vegan? raw food diet okay actually I started um, I became a vegan once my husband had a heart attack in 03 actually I started in January after the holidays and um, I it wasn't it was because of Becky she came to um, Pete's hospital bed dropped off Dean Ornish's book and her cookbook and then Pete said I'm never going to come back to this bed again and we better you know change and so I was like, uh-oh, oh, now i got to... Because we were like so used to dining at high-end places. And we were, I was just like, for, for two years, I was cooking my food. And just last year, on my way back from the Bahamas, or on my way to the Bahamas, we stopped in in New York at the Pure Food and Wine restaurant. 
it just blew my socks off. It was so incredible. It, I couldn't believe we had lasagna without any noodles, and it was just tomato slices as the noodles, you know, and it just it was, was all raw. so exactly. wonderful and so vibrant. So on our way back, we stopped in in San Francisco at Cafe Gratitude. I, um, nothing was open when we got there because it was a Sunday, and we checked on the web, and I didn't want to go to any um, raw food place that had soy, 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 soy. You know, I don't like mock stuff. You know, it doesn't taste good. If I want to eat this real thing, I'm going to eat it, you know. And um, so I found Cafe Gratitude, and they were open. They're, they're so popular. They're open from like 9 in the morning to 9 at night. And people share tables, you know, and they're really cool. So after that, I bought a stack of um, cookbooks, and Renee's one was on the top of the list. I was like thumbing through all of them, and I really liked her cookbook, and I as you can see, I put all those little post-it tabs. Okay, I'm going to try this one, I'm going to try this one, I'm going to try this one. And I bring it wherever I went. Like, we, we always go out with our husbands to listen to jazz. And so, for I'd say from May all the way to, to now, I've been raw. Although, I do, um, we do go out to some restaurants that are not, of course, there's no raw restaurants around. And um, i say I'm close to 85 to 95% raw. Really because I bring, yeah, I bring my stuff wherever I go. Like if we're going to a buffet, I pack a little bag, you know, a small bag, like a gift bag, and um, I bring my own dressing. Or whatever. if it's a buffet, they don't care. You're still paying, right? So I still bring my own stuff. What do you eat when you get there that you would want to eat? Um, well, they have um, buffets have a lot of raw foods, yeah, because vegetables are inexpensive prepare the meat, and um, if they don't, then I always have my own salad dressing, so I always have your own salad dressing. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, he must be a good source of raw olives that are available, affordable. I'm not sure if it's affordable. Um, Bound to Earth has those sun-dried olives, and you have to soak them in um, oil and uh, put some salt and a bay leaf for how long? I don't know. I think it was two days or more, and then it gets plump again. But that would be about the only one. I always call Dean and DeLuca and have them mail me five pounds. <laughs> and last time I asked for pitted ones, and they didn't, they sent me the ones with the pit, and it said pitted. Oh, the question is, uh, can we substitute a miso for rejuvelac to make nut butters, I mean nut, nut, cheese. nut cheeses? And that's what I learned from Renee's, yeah. Renee uh, Lou's Undercoffer's book. That's what we do. Uh, that yeah. it's much easier, and I don't know how to, I, I haven't really made with you black, so. We, we, we made it in culinary school and then sort of promptly forgot because we found out that miso works just fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> much faster. It's, it has to be unpasteurized, otherwise it's not going to. The white... Um, pasteurized, right. like Cold Mountain is one of them. The yeah. various recipes um, have call for different red, red miso or white miso. So. What is rejuvelac? Rejuvelac is um, it's a, a Pro- probiotic. probiotic beverage that's made out of wheat, what's that, wheat rye, rye um, or wheat berries, wheat berries yeah. and um, you have to soak it and fermented. ferment it. It's and a all process. That stuff. It's about a two-day job. <laughs> You'd be surprised how much protein is in broccoli. And um, any of the dark leafy greens. Um, also, they ha- it has a lot of calcium. And what are some of the other good ones? Oh, in fact, the calcium is on the par of milk. But you don't get the bad, the bad um, saturated fat. It's basically the same amount of calcium um, as milk, except for... It doesn't have the bad stuff that milk has, and it's it's actually uh, calcium that's of, you know bioavailable, and it, it, because it's not combined with a, a protein from an animal source, it's just it's the real right. thing, and it, it's it's great. Yeah. Also, um, our, we get our starches a lot from um, from squashes and vegetables, um, a lot of fiber from the nuts as well. 
and so black seeds. Every now and then we eat. Um, if we were, if we're going to eat rice, it's going to be wild rice, and we'll we'll sprout it. If if we were to eat rice, it would be brown or wild rice, but don't really anymore. We've retired our rice cookers. Yeah, we have a question about B12 there. Oh, oh, B12. Um, we get our B12 from the uh, nutritional yeast, nutrition the Red the Star. Red Star, red star right. nutrition. Add that to our nut cheeses and uh, various uh, dishes that we make. Yes. Can you tell us more about your company? Oh, uh, yes. The school? Licious dishes? Or the company? Okay, licious dishes. Um, something like I saw um, an article in the New York Times last year. And it said that you know people would go to the center and they would assemble their meals and um, they would you know put whatever portions that the recipe says to put in and they take it home they take home like 12 meals in one pack stick it in their freezer for the whole month but because we're raw and we're vegan we can't do 12 and you can't stick it in the freezer the most I think um, I would I would offer is 12, I mean, it's five meals because um, people go out to eat as well. The sauces will be separate. The sauces so are separate. So, and I'm all packaged that way separately and easy to follow with assembly instructions. And so, whenever you want to eat it, if you want to take it to the office, take it to a party or whatever, or just eat dinner eat. at home. Yeah. yeah. Then, when you're driving, we know, okay, it's going to be enchiladas, man. <laughs> but also, I would recommend people to buy a dehydrator, or you could even use your oven. Um, heat it to the, the lowest level, and the, um, put it into the oven, and leave the door ajar so that you can monitor the heat for, let's say, about 20 to 30 minutes until it's just warmed up. Thank you. If you would take a minute to help us, uh, they need to be put in stack. And take a couple minutes if you're able to help the chairs in stack so that we can put them back there. If you make your the refreshments are being served. Thank you for coming. This program is brought to you by the Vegetarian Society of Hawaii a nonprofit organization dedicated to sharing with the community the many benefits of a vegetarian diet. Three monthly meetings include vegetarian experts found locally and on the mainland, quick and easy cooking demonstrations, and healthful and delicious food samples. Members enjoy an informative quarterly newsletter, social activities, and discounts at many vegetarian-friendly restaurants and health food stores. For an application, call 944-8344. That's 944-8344 or visit our website at www.vsh.org, vsh.org.